Okay guys, it got dark on me last night. My battery ran out of my camera, I changed it, then my uh, SD card got full. So anyway, I ended up getting all the pistons put in and looking good. So now I'm ready to, I'm gonna roll the uh, engine over and I'm going to install the cam from the bottom side so I can oil those uh, cam bearings real good. <laughs> All right, I got my cam old, the bearings old. I'm ready to go in with it. Super easy. Take your time. That's what I like about doing it from the bottom is you can kind of help it along. And that is that. Got all my lobes old as well. I'm ready to flip this thing back over and put my lifters in. Okay, lifters are all in. Now I'm ready to go on with the head. So, starting to look more like an engine again. All right, I'm putting some dowels in to keep the head gasket lined up and to put the head on square. Okay, I've got my Loctite 592 on this bolt. This is not a thread locker. This is a pipe or thread sealant to keep water from getting past your threads. It never sets up and gets hard and locks your boat in place. So this is what the uh, factory service manual calls for and that's, that's what I have. Okay, I got to tighten all the bolts, uh, one through ten, twenty-two foot pounds. Now I got to do that again to forty-five foot pounds. Okay, I gotta do that one more time at 45 foot pounds. It says to make sure everything is exactly at 45 foot pounds. So when I do that, I'll come back. Okay, now I gotta tighten bolts one through six to 110 foot pounds. All right, that's one through six to 110. You gotta back it off to 100 now and torque this one down. This one gets a lower torque.
cut it back up to 110 and finish torquing. Okay guys, this is 12 point bolts. These studs right here are hard to find a socket that'll fit over them. This socket, I got it at Lowe's. It's 12 point deep well, but it wouldn't fit over the stud. So what I had to do is take it to the shop and uh, took a, a Dremble tool with a barrel wheel, a small barrel wheel. Got in there and honed it out to so where it would slide right down over those studded bolts. So. Anyway, if you're going to be doing this, you'll need a socket to fit over those. And that's how I got one. This is what I've got. Cam, crank, rods, pistons, head installed. <clears throat> you see the rocker arms up here. These are not staying. I have new rocker arms and push rods ordered. These are not bolted down. I was trying to find out how much uh, preload my lifters had on them. And was finding tons of inconsistencies down through there. I had my dial indicator up there and everyone was changing. And whoever built this engine before, whoever the previous owners got to build this engine before, there's a potluck of rock arms here. There, many of them's different. That's why I couldn't get anything consistent. So I was going to reuse them, but there's no way on earth I can reuse these and be satisfied with this engine rebuild. So I ordered new ones and ordered new push rods. And uh, and when I do my plunger, when I do my lifter preload i gotta see how much it is and if it's too much i may have to actually order more push rods that'll be shorter than the ones i've got coming in because i got the factory ones oem coming in and i know i did have them to shave the head a little bit so that's why this is up here the re reason these are up here is because i'm going to be putting on the the timing gears i did end up getting new timing gear timing change with my gasket kit my machine that's got me and uh, I'm going to be flipping it upside down, put the oil pan, oil pump, and stuff like that on. And I don't want my lifters to be sliding out and bouncing on the concrete floor. So that's why they, these are up here, just to hold my lifters in place. So this morning we're going to be doing the timing chain, timing chain cover, putting oil pump on the oil pan. Okay, I've got my gears on. i got my timing marks lined up. And now I'm going to take this gear right here back off, put my timing chain on it, and see if I can get it back on. Just like that right there, just a little back and forth with the chain. And both my marks are lined up. All right, I got my my gears and my chain on. Uh, got my line, my marks lined up right here. Crank is at top dead center. Uh, valves are closed, marks lined up, everything's in time. So I'm ready to put this bolt in and tighten it down to 80 foot pounds. Okay, I've got the front cover put on uh, completely. I put the damper back on the front cover to center the seal up, tighten the front cover, pull the damper back off, and tighten these last two bolts I couldn't get to. So now I'm fixing to roll the engine over, install the oil pump, put the oil pan and gasket on.
Okay guys, I left the camera off. I got all the oil pan bolts in and torqued down to battery specs. Now I'm fixing to roll it back over. Put my harmonic balancer back on. Uh, put the water pump on and get some of that stuff done. Okay guys, uh, my brother came over and we got pretty involved getting this engine put back in. Uh, I was laying under the bottom, he was on the top. My nephew was over here. Anyway, we uh, we got the transmission lined up with the uh, crank and got all that stuff splined together. And It's not rocket science getting the engine put back in, but fixing to put the motor mounts on and get the engine stable inside the frame and I'll start putting all the air compressor and extra pieces on. Okay guys, I like putting my bow cover back on and plugging my harness back up to my throttle body over there. Uh, but first, I'm going to take the tape off my distributor hole and I'm going to uh, run a screwdriver bit down in there and put it on an electric drill and spin the oil pump until I see oil coming out of these uh, holes right here in the rock arms. That means I got my whole engine <clears throat> is uh, lubricated and I'm gonna make sure every one of them is doing that and then I'm going to put the valve cover back on it, plug up all my wires, and right before I start it, I'll spin the distributor again to make sure it's, you know, still primed up real good. Put my distributor in the distributor hole, and then I should start the engine and do the braking process. Okay, guys, the, uh, the engine install is complete. At this point, I've already broken it in. Uh, where I left you at last time was <clears throat> priming the oil pump. I did exactly what I said I was going to do with the drill and the screwdriver. And got everything primed up real good. I still got, I just noticed this, I got to clean up some of this old oil what was it had so much blow about before. But uh, everything is looking good. It runs good. What I did was I did my break-in process for 20 minutes and I've already got I've got less than 100 miles on it but what I did is I cranked it made sure my oil pressure moved and then I instantly went to 2,000 rpms and had it held it at 2,000 rpms 2,000 2,300 just just above two while my brother watched the outside made sure that I didn't have anything leaking or anything and held it there for 20 minutes and then when it 20 minutes elapsed i killed it and i let the engine get stone cold before i cranked it again and uh 
so that's that was the break-in process and before i cranked it again i did do an oil change so this oil change right here has gotten uh 72 miles on it so i want to let it hit 100 miles and i'm going to change the oil again and then i'll probably go 1500 miles and change the oil again and at that point in time i'll get on my regular 3000 mile uh scheduled oil change so anyway let me fire this thing up and let y'all hear it run Sounds like a little sewing machine. So, everything is as I wanted it to be. It runs good and quiet. No bad noises or anything. It's just smooth. You hear the injectors uh, over there click and gives it a little bit of a diesel sound, but that's the, that's the injectors. I don't know if y'all can hear it on camera. It's really quiet. It's got a good, tight, sound so i love it i don't have any more power than i did before i was kind of hoping i might gain a little bit more power but i did not gain any power so it's a four cylinder it's not supposed to be fast so anyway i'm very pleased with the outcome man she sounds good Tickled to death. Guys, I know when I got back to uh, building on the engine that the last part of the video I just kind of went through fast. I didn't want this video series to last on and on and on. And uh, I showed the things that I thought was important. The one thing that I didn't show that I might have should have had was uh, the rock arms, but those are, that's kind of self-explanatory too. It's not, it's not rocket science. I did use a dial indicator to check my push rod to lift or preload everything was good and so anyway that's going to wrap up this video jj's done i'm ready to start driving him again i've already drove him to work a couple of days this week and uh no problems at all everything's running good engine sounds great sure i'll have something else to do jj he never fails to give me something to do so y'all come back next time we'll see what we got going then thanks for watching yeah, yeah.